The Spinning PJ. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success has landed them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. Mic's on. Did you see the first we question are live <laughs> in the studio. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm very excited to be here. Uh, a lot of different reasons. It, boy, I come out swinging, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> come I'm out excited. swinging. <laughs> I'm all excited. What? I, I, <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Y'all don't understand, man. I've been having like uh, uh, so last year. You know, obviously, COVID jacked the elite season all up, and we were stretched out in the deer season and all that stuff. Y'all know how I feel about deer hunting. If you don't, you don't watch this show. Um, but that being said. Uh, excited to be back in the studio and Jeff and I were just talking before we started tonight that when I'm here for a while I can't speak for thrift he's at the beach tonight so we'll be missing we'll be missing smoke tonight I, I know he's got at least two events left this year but I <laughs> excuse me and I, and I know he's doing the Toyota series too by the way congrats to smoke who's not here tonight on his sixth place finish at Lake Champlain in the Toyota series after uh, that was right after the elites that's right after we left Champlain and uh, thanks to Bass Live, I'm sure that's why Thrift ended up finishing six. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Congrats, Thrift. <laughs> Thrift always does well at Champlain. But, no, he uh, – um, yeah, great finish. Great finish, Smoke. And I uh, hope you're having fun at the beach. We're here working. For you, we're here. You're at the beach. But, I'm kind of filling in. I'm like I'm like the JV squad over here yeah, kind of filling in JV, tonight. So JV squad. We had yeah. to call in Mr. Todd Goad <laughs> from Pulse Fish Lures. Came down What's the up, guys? Over from uh, East Tennessee. And we're going to talk about a couple of really cool things with him in, in, in just a second. Um, but we're going to talk about – I already saw a couple of questions about classic qualifications, elite series, things like that. We're going to do a full elite series wrap-up uh, over the last two events of the season. We're going to talk about classic qualifications. We have a really, really cool giveaway at the end of the show. Todd, you want to tell them what we're giving away and why it's, why it's so cool? Because it's just different than what we normally do. It is. The reason it's so cool, and i got to give a shout-out to my partner in this, uh, in this thing in crime, Jeremy, um, with Pulse Fish. He had a great idea. So whoever wins this prize pack tonight is going to get to pick 10 baits from Pulse Fish Lures, the baits that you would throw, not just a random prize pack we put together. Any bait they want. Any bait you want. 10 baits that you would throw. And we're going to throw in a carpet graphic with it, too. So I thought that was a really cool idea to do that. Yeah, that's, that, there's not another company out there that I've worked with that would do that. You know, typically you ask, and, and all my sponsors are very supportive of giveaways, but typically you ask, can we do a giveaway? And they'll say, yeah, we got 10 of these to give away or five of these to give away or whatever. But Tom and, uh, and Jeremy were like, look, let's do this. And I'm like, that's really cool because they can literally go out on the website and pick out 10 baits of whatever they want, and they get a free carpet graphic. Graphic. Well, it's all free to the winner, but they get a free uh, uh, carpet graphic to go along with it. Um, so very, very cool giveaway. That'll be at the end of the show uh, for our trivia question tonight. So we've got Mr. Todd in the studio, and we are very excited to talk about the topic of the show tonight, which is the spinning PJ. All right, guys, this is an underspin that Todd and I have been working on for – Six months, eight months? At least, yeah. <laughs> Six or eight plus months, countless hours, a lot of testing. <clears throat> and there's a lot of underspins out there on the market. But what we wanted to do, we wanted to make the perfect underspin, okay? We wanted to make one that was tournament ready straight out of the pack. And if anybody knows me, not quite to the thrift level, but I'm pretty anal about my tackle and I want everything just right. Me too. So, yeah, so what we've done is we've taken an underspin and we took all my favorite components and characteristics of all the other other spins out there, and we've combined them into one. So first off, and here's the packaging here. Yes, if you buy one, you, my ugly mug is on the package, so you're just going to have to roll with that. Um, but the underspin comes in three eighths and five eighths models. Okay, it is uh, it, it's our custom pulse fish head, same thing that's on the swim bait head and the pulse jig, uh, with the collar underneath. But we've added a wire keeper here to keep your uh, soft plastic trailers secure up on the head. Um, Really cool feature right here, guys. Most important part of the any bait is the hook, and this is a 3 alt Gamagatsu light wire hook. Light wire is key when you're fishing an underspin, okay? Best components on the market, Gamagatsu hooks, Spro barrel swivels. Guys got the lifelike eyes on the head, like I said, the custom pulse fish head, which is it's a staple for the pulse fish team. 
And um, this arm, wire arm that comes out below the head, this is key. And what we've uh, what we tested over over our testing period and different prototypes is the angle and the length of that arm. Because what I wanted, what Todd wanted, was we wanted an underspin that from the second you start your retrieve, whether it's 20 feet deep or a foot on the surface, and you're winding it fast or you're winding it slow, we wanted that blade to run true from the start of that retrieve all the way through the finish of that retrieve. Okay, um, what I've had issues with in the past. Uh, and it has a lot to do with the separation and the angle of the blade coming off the head and how it's connected to the head. Uh, as I've had them foul up, I've had them roll over on their side, I've had them do different things to where they're not consistent throughout the whole retrieve. Um, so we've made it ready, straight out of the pack, tournament ready with all the best components, and they are <laughs> available now. Jeff's over here laughing, so I'm sure. I'm laughing at there's new. A, uh, <laughs> laughing at new. <laughs> laughing at new. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we'll give new a shout. New's part of the Pulse Fish team, and I think he was a little sour because he wasn't invited tonight, but I don't think he would have come if he was invited. Him and Brittany were like looking at new houses. He was trying to find the right shop to put his boat in and, <laughs> you know, and, and all that good stuff. And Brittany <laughs> yeah. was trying to find something that had a she shed, so... <laughs> Shout out to you, so, Brittany. Hope you so, found your she shed today. So Y'all pray for Brian because <laughs> apparently uh, old New and uh, and Brittany are out house shopping today. I think when the signature uh, new bait comes out, whatever it's going to be, uh, Brittany's probably going to be on the package too. Why don't we just leave New off if we're going to put Brittany on? I think it'd just be Brittany's. Yeah. 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 It's, it's gonna be Brittany's going to have her own bait. Brittany's signature, signature bait. <laughs> um, so, guys, they are available now. They're available on the website. Um, they're available at your nearest retailer, but one place that they're available that a lot of people don't know about, and a lot of people are becoming more and more aware of, of this, this tackle business now, which is a, also a boat business. Um, our title sponsor, our presenting sponsor of this show, Angler's Choice Marine, has a huge tackle store at their Martinsville location, and they also have really nice tackle selection at both the Spindale and the Lexington locations. They're growing every day, and what one thing they have, they have a lot of really hard to find stuff, like mm -hmm. glide baits and swim baits, Japanese stuff. Um, they got a lot of stuff that's hard to get, especially in today's market, exactly. you know. And what they have just added recently to their lineup in Martinsville, you can go by and pick them up, you can order them online, is they've added the spinning PJ, <laughs> okay? I think they get both sizes. All four colors? Yeah, they've got, okay. they've got all four colors and both sizes. Yeah. Both sizes, all mm -hmm. four colors. They've added a full lineup of the Pulse Jigs, which y'all know what the Pulse Jigs are. Um, we're not going to do a whole show on the Pulse Jigs, but everybody on here is very familiar with the Pulse Jig. But Angler's Choice, their, locate, their tackle locations have a, uh, a great tackle selection. Check them out when you're in the area. Uh, you can go online. They do some really cool stuff on, on Tuesdays on their Instagram page, mm -hmm. too. They do Tackle Tuesday tips. Um, and they've got a guy in, in the studio, excuse me, in the store there that, uh, that, that knows bass fishing, does a really good job with explaining some of the new stuff they get in. Uh, they showcase some of the new products. Um, they've done a couple of videos on the, the spinning PJ. They've done some stuff on the pulse jig, um, a lot of Absolutely. different things. But um, another thing about Angler's Choice, guys uh, and gals, there's, there's been obviously a shortage in our industry from a lot of different angles, especially of everything. With, <laughs> of everything, everything. I mean, both. Literally, everything. everything. Literally. Angler's Choice because... Except for pulse jigs yeah. and, and underspin. <laughs> well, one thing... made in the USA. Exactly. It, it, tell them why there's no shortage of these yeah. and why there won't be any shortage yeah. of these. We ship out... I mean, any order, we ship out within 24 hours. And uh, if anybody orders anything during the show tonight, you'll probably get a tracking number while the show's still on tonight. So just, just wanted to throw that out there because we, we ship fast. We got plenty of inventory and... But I didn't want to steal your thunder about Angler's Choice because they do have inventory of boats. And, they you know, do. Not a lot of people have that right now. It's... Heck, my boat sponsor, it's 20 weeks to get a boat. 20 so, weeks. 20 weeks. Yeah. yeah, so that's, I actually talked to Trent the other day, and he said, well, you know, we've got boats rolling in. And, and, and Angler's Choice is an elite level dealer, meaning they sell a lot of boats, you know. Um, and, and that does help them, you know, kind of in, in the, the rankings on how quick they can get boats and things like that. But they have a lot of 2022 boats rolling in very soon, Tritons, Rangers, uh, nitros, you know, the whole White River Marine brand, they've got them coming in. Uh, the thing about it is, guys, you know, Trent mentioned, and this is important, when you're out there shopping for a new boat, you know, we all like to kind of wait till the boat shows up at the dealership. We like to go look at it ourselves. We like to check it out. But if you get, uh, I'm talking about in the next six to eight months, if, if, you've, if you're in the market for a new boat, don't wait for that window to where once it arrives. Because Trent did tell me that you need to tell anybody that's in the market for a new boat that, they don't even make it to their website at this point. Like, when these mm -hmm. boats are coming in, they're sold. So 
get on get on the phone call them see what they got coming in see what the colors are see what the models are see if it's something that you like because don't wait for these boats to show up on their website with a full ad you know full page ad and color pictures because they're not they don't have time to do that they're selling as fast as they can get them um, but to let you know angler's choice all three locations they do have some inventory right now and they've got more coming in as we speak so very excited about that a um, couple other things i wanted to say about the about the spin and pj um uh, some of the other ones on the market, and this was something Matt and I talked about a lot, um, the, the swivel and that arm is so important. You know, there's, there's some on the market that the swivel is built into the head, and that was one thing we wanted, something to spin. As soon as you turn the reel handle and started that retrieve, this blade was spinning. And a lot of them, you got to snap your rod to get it to spin, and then you don't know if it's spinning or not. So this, a lot of times, surprisingly, in this little old three-quarter of an inch arm, a lot of testing, a lot of trials, a lot of a lot of R and D went into this. I'm going to give a close up while you're talking because we had a request to see a okay, close up cool. of this thing. You yeah. keep going. Yeah. And another another neat thing about the bait, you know, a lot of them have them in quarter and half ounce models. We we specifically went with a three eighths and a five eighths. Um, and the reason for five eighths is uh, a lot of times Back in the winter, you know, this. Back off a little bit. You got yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. In the winter time, um, the five eighths model will be great to slow roll in those ditches and out off the ends of them points and the mouths of the creeks. And that bait will stay in contact with the bottom, being a five eighths ounce, and that blade will always be spinning. So, we went with the five eighths ounce model, um, you know, for that very reason. And one other thing too, you know, a lot of people associate this bait with like a cold water kind of a winter time bait, but I got a buddy today, David sent me a picture, he caught, he caught him on it today, he sent me a picture, you know, and it's 100 degrees outside and he's catching them on it. It's, an, it's a 12 month, uh, you know, of the year bait. Um, not going to give away the lake you caught him on, David, but because uh, <laughs> I know you're watching the show, but um, he's a great angler and he throws our baits a lot and we appreciate it. But it's, uh, you know, he's, I know he's out there fishing probably 30 foot deep with our underspin and catching them today on it. So it's really cool. Yeah, so, and that's something about, you know, the Pulse Fish team, and, and <laughs> I want to give a, a, a quick shout-out, too, <clears throat> to the Pulse Fish team guys and gals because they, uh, they, they were one of the, uh, the first group that got an opportunity to put this bait in their hand, fish with it, and give us feedback on it. <clears throat> you know, Todd and I can only do so much testing ourselves. We want to get it out there and get it in people's, and we're getting pictures of fish catches, which we love. Absolutely. Then we know it's working. Yeah. Um, when you get tip videos from people on your team too, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and you know, one thing that uh, kind of an after product of it is is um, one of the guys on the team posted a video and talked about how the head gives the the swim bait you put on it like a paddle style a, a little more side to side kick. So, you know, there's really neat to have you guys on the team giving feedback, testing the products, and 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 catching fish with them actually. Yeah, and that that truly that truly defines what you know team means because that we couldn't do it without each and every one of them and the support that we get and the feedback that we get because look <clears throat> I, I wanted this thing perfect and todd did too and if we just sent you know a couple thousand of them out there and got them in circulation and and that's what the team's for you know they're 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 there to tell us if if look this thing doesn't run right look the hook sucks whatever it is um you know we're going to make sure it's right before it, it it goes out to the uh, to the general yeah. public especially i see a question on here derek um derek westfall said it's really good on cumberland um and when will it be available it's available now on the website and it's in a lot of your uh tackle retailers in the area too so it's it's ready to roll matt newman that would be a pretty good solid bet there yes um, we've already talked about that a couple <laughs> many times <laughs> yeah and i've seen uh i said todd <laughs> If I make this classic next year, I don't care if it takes us till February 29th to finish this thing, but it has to be done by the first day of the Bassmaster Classic. So, um, well, you also said the other day that I need to win the Open at Norman so we can both correct. be throwing it. Correct. And I said, well, if I don't suck like I did in the first two Opens, I might, I might have a shot. Yeah, so, so Todd still has an opportunity. <laughs> if he goes out and, and he has one more Bassmaster Open mm -hmm. left, and uh, if he goes out and wins that sucker, which I, I got faith in him, I think he can do it. Um, over here at uh, next door here at Lake Norman, yeah. which will be a, uh, it'll be a, it'll be a tough tournament, but it'll be a fun tournament. There'll be a lot of fish caught. And, uh, you know, he has an opportunity to qualify for the next year's Classic also. Um, I want I got, to talk about. I got a lot of buddies that live over here in North Carolina, and they've told me the spots have grown up in this place. And they said if you fish, 
if you fish Norman the way you fish Hartwell and, and Lanier kind of offshore stuff, you got a really good chance to win. So you I'm can. looking forward to getting over there and doing that. <clears throat> One thing about that tournament is, uh, you know, in years past, you had to mix in a lot of shallow fish to do good in that event. And Troy Morrow won, I believe it was a, BF, was it a BFL regional. Yes, it was. Okay, he won a BFL mm-hmm. regional doing something at Lake Norman that nobody's ever done before. And, 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 and part of that's because it, that, that type of forward-facing sonar wasn't available. Uh, in years past but at the same time we know those fish were always out there they were just um, somewhat uncatchable yeah so now those fish are are a little bit more vulnerable with our electronics and things like that and um, that time of year when it doesn't take giant bags every day to win they uh, um, they become more of a factor so um, like I said I got I I like I like the way the lake's gonna set up especially for a fisherman uh, with Todd's skill set and I I think you'll do just fine Um, all right thanks for the kind words Tyler I did see, <clears throat> absolutely, Spencer. You could fish a pulse jig uh, 18 feet plus, uh, 18 plus feet deep, and Todd just so happens to have the underspin. You know, I like to go. We talked about that earlier. We like to go to the 5 8 ounce model on the spinning PJ. If you're trying to keep it on the bottom, especially fishing ditches and things like that, and some of the blueback heron lakes, which is a popular technique. Uh, but Todd, you want to show them your your preference on size for fishing 20 feet deep, roughly? Um, we do have a, a a pulse jig, and they're available on the website also. That is. Uh, specifically designed for for fishing there's depths a, like that yeah there's a couple that work really well there's our our five eighths ounce model i don't know if you can see that in the in the picture there but it's got our own plastic on it um, that works really well fishing deep like that and then we've also got our one ounce and one of the things that we've noticed and we've had feedback from it as well is you know everybody everybody <clears throat> throws a great big scrounger out there type bait um with a you know a big plastic on it and probably you know every fish on those kind of lakes tennessee river lakes or whatever they've seen a big bait out there on a scrounger type head and we've and we've gotten feedback that our one ounce and it's got a lot of kick to it it's got a good hunting action but when you put a smaller fluke type bait on it it's getting people more bites because it's something the fish haven't seen in a while they've been seeing that big bait come by their heads that's right and and this will get you a lot more bites out there so the one ounce for fishing deep like that one ounce and a five eighths are two really good applications for that <clears throat> and again guys we've got i think we i think we've got a pretty good inventory on the uh on the pulse jigs but get you a few of those bigger ones especially if you're out there fishing deep right now we are somewhat limited we have more coming in on our spinning pjs right now so be sure to go to the website and get those on order if you want some uh be sure to get in on that deal um, angler's choice has a full inventory over there um, and obviously a lot of local retailers are starting to pick them up pretty quick absolutely yep I like Jeff Culpepper's comment. They don't work in Georgia at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that's a lie. Uh, all right, uh, let's 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 start talking about the elite season wrap up. And guys, shoot questions over. Todd, you're you're a lot. I'm not trying to burn Thrift because he's not here, but you're you don't do this normally, like regularly, like Thrift and I do. But he's so good at picking up comments too. He is um, pretty good. I've been paying attention to that. I'm yeah, coachable. I'm coachable. really good at, at picking up comments. And uh, if you so if you see a question. Uh, about the elite series or the pulse jig, let me know um, if if I'm if I miss something. Sorry, um, thrift. I didn't. They didn't pay me to, to <laughs> for that. They didn't pay me for that. Well, no, I'm kidding. All right. So, uh, elite series wrap up, guys. Last two events uh, since we last spoke was Lake Champlain and St. Lawrence River. And you know, everybody knows my goal. We were talking about that earlier. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> each and every year is to qualify for the classic if you win an event along the way great if not i want to be at the biggest tournament in bass fishing every single season and i want to make that bass master classic so we did do that i had some questions earlier we did qualify for the classic and let me give a run now so my finish is at champlain i think 42nd or 43rd and st lawrence was 57th i believe i figured i needed to average a 45th place finish going into these last two events um now, what a lot of people are seeing, what you see online on the AOI standings is the AOI standings based on nine tournaments, okay? What Bass allowed us to do that a lot of people were still unaware of and confused on was they allowed all the anglers to drop their lowest tournament if an angler missed an event due to COVID and they fished the remaining event. So this, this angler missed an event due to COVID. It was David Fritz, if anybody's wondering. He was the only one all year. Thank goodness that mm-hmm. that actually uh, actually missed an event due to COVID, um, and fished the remainder of the season, because that happened. That was put in place to protect all the anglers from the COVID deal. Because 
you know, we fished with the flu, we fished with broken legs, we fished with whatever, and, and we would have fished with COVID, but we weren't going to be allowed to. Mm-hmm. Now, so what that did is allowed everybody a drop. The drop points were not made public from what I understand, and they, they might have been now, but that was for classic qualification only. The AOI standings that you see on the Bassmaster website was for the AOI and the Rookie of the Year, which it should be that way, and all the anglers voted that way. You should not get a drop and win AOI right. because somebody could have won AOI, well, probably not with the way Seth fished and right. the way his season was, but you would never want that to happen. You get a drop and you win AOI, and this guy loses it because you dropped the tournament. So <clears throat> we decided, uh, we all voted to do that at the beginning of the year. Um, that being said, it put me – you see me in 41st on the Bassmaster website, which would have still made the classic, but it bumped me to actually 40th with my drop. Uh, it moved a couple guys out of the classic and moved a couple guys in the classic. And, you know, we're, we could sit here all day and argue about this, that, and the other. Um, but once the rule was made, it, it, you know, it wasn't going to be changed. Um, was it fair to everybody in the end? Not necessarily. Um, because a guy, you know, in my eyes, a guy that fished well enough to be in the top – 42, they ended up taking 42. Um, normally it's 39, but we had some double qualifiers. They took through 42nd place. And, you know, there's some guys that, that were in the top 42 on the after nine tournaments that got bumped out, and some guys got bumped in because they got to drop a tournament. Um, that's just the way it was That's just the way it was this year. There's, there's, no, there's no sit here and arguing about it. Um, but you know, it, it did. It, it 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 was a hard pill to swallow for some 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 very good fishermen out there. And um, you know, I don't knock on wood. Uh, hopefully, this won't happen again. But you know, Hank Hank Cherry and myself had a conversation, and Hank had a really good idea. If if we have to enter 2022 with the same scenario, <laughs> Lord willing, we don't. And there is a drop awarded based on somebody that misses an event due to COVID then that drop should only apply if it affects moving somebody in or out of the classic, Mm -hmm. okay? So Fritz, who was the only one that missed an event due to COVID this year, would not have qualified for the classic whether he had a drop or not. But it affected some guys. Because of the rule. Because Because of the the rule, rule. okay? So moving forward, and Bass has heard this feedback, I'm sure. Um, I know Hank's mention it to him. I know a couple guys have mentioned it to him, which makes perfect sense and makes it a little bit fair, more fair across the board. Now, that wasn't really, you know, that wasn't really at the top of the list when this rule was initially made. Bass was concerned with about making it fair for every angler across the board, period, no matter what happens. And, and, it, and it was the right decision, 100%. Looking back on it, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but moving forward, hopefully it can be amended to the point to where it protects Absolutely. the guys from missing a classic because they took a drop and it booted them out of those standings. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, um, you know, that being said, moving forward, um, I think we've all, we've all obviously been through a lot with, with everything that's gone on the past year and a half or so. But that's um, – hopefully that's – you know, if we have to do a, make a rule like that for yeah. 2022, that's, that's what it will be. Well, well, congratulations <laughs> to you making the classic because, I mean, I kind of – I kind of got to see behind the curtain all year. You know, you and I talked quite a few times when you've got a lot of windshield time between events and driving home. And it, uh, it was neat to me. You know, I've tournament fished all my life, and it was really neat to hear how your strategy and how you approach things and how, you know, things came together and how you, you did this, but I got this backup plan because i got to make the classic and, and how – because it's your livelihood, you know. You want to be at the biggest stage in bass fishing. I really, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I don't want you at the pulse booth at the classic. I want you out I, there. I don't mean I, this in a bad I, way, but I don't want to I, be there. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I want you out. I want you out there chunking the spin and PJ on bass live, catching four pound spots on it. You know. So, it was really neat to see, um, you know, and the strategy and the way semi, that you see my melt semi meltdowns semi todd, meltdowns. todd got to be on the receiving end yeah. of that on some phone calls hey, earlier i talked you off the ledge that one time <laughs> he did. But, but that's what friends are for though <laughs> but it was really cool to see that and you know it was uh, another thing that doesn't get uh, the attention that it should is new was leading rookie of the year till the last competition day on the elite series and shout out to you new i know you didn't get the finish you wanted nor what we wanted that bl- that but rookie of the year race blew my mind well, because four it, guys that made the class yeah the it, rookies. Was, it was the rookie class this year was yeah. the strongest class as i've seen in a long time absolutely and to be leading that going into the final day of fishing and you know just it, it's amazing 
you know, it, it kind of goes to bass on how the qualification levels for people to get to the elites. When you make it to the elites, you have to catch them every single day. And you and I have had this conversation. Yep. You know, you've got to catch them every day you put the boat in the water or you may not have a job next year. So, exactly I mean, right. it's really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real world scenario when it comes to tournament bass fishing. Absolutely. And talking about that conservative approach and, you know, going into Champlain and <laughs> St. Lawrence, obviously there was an option to make some super, super long runs there. Mm -hmm. Really risky runs <clears throat> that could pay off huge or they could really, you know, dig yourself an early exactly. grave. Um, I knew going into both events that I needed a, a you know, I needed to, to, to basically make a couple cuts and make some big checks and, and just do the best I could. To make, but what I, what I always try to do, and, and my roommate Canterbury will argue with me about this all the time because he's a, he's a big risk taker. And, and I am too given uh, under the right circumstances. If you were 10th in points, you'd have probably ran out. Correct. There. Yeah. So <laughs> Ontario completely out of my mind, off limits in my mind. Okay. And the reason being is because, not because I didn't want to win the tournament, it's because I wanted to make the classic. I thought the tournament would be won in Ontario. Okay. And it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and that I thought, you know, I could make a day three cut fishing right here in the Waddington pool, not venturing out more than 20 miles from takeoff, keeping everything in order, making sure I get in, I get out, um, or I get out and I get in safely. Mm -hmm. um, no mechanical failures. No, and that's not trusting your equipment. That's just making a smart decision in my mind. Absolutely. Okay, so that is, uh, and I had, I didn't have a great practice, but I thought I could scrounge around and catch enough for a, uh, for a day three cut and unfortunately first day uh only weighed in 15 something which normally that sounds great and all but at st lawrence yeah. river it put me in like 75th place no 68th place um i knew i needed to gain 10 to 15 spots based on the points that night to 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 make a run at the classic and by the hair of our chin we jumped up to 57th with a 17 something pound bag the second day and slid in um champlain we did make the day three cut there and finished 42nd or 43rd and and we barely did enough to, to make the classic. But, but in the end, you know, whether you're the last man in or the first man in, well, first man in gets a, a bonus $100,000 because he was the angler of the year. But everybody else, you know, we, uh, uh, we fished all year to make the classic. And, and it doesn't matter how you qualified once you're there. You have an opportunity to win on the biggest stage in bass fishing. And, and I got a little taste of that opportunity this year. And, I, you know, I told my wife and a lot of people and, and sponsors and friends and, that I don't ever want to miss another one. And, and hopefully moving forward, I don't, I, I'd like not to cut it that close next year. Absolutely. If it's up to me. Um, but I saw some, oh, go ahead. Well, Tom. I was just going to say, like, Jeff and I were, we were texting, you know, and when you were, when you were busting him and it was like, dude, he's going to win. He's going to win. He's going to win. And it was like, you know, and I think you told the story of the sweat drop in your eye and the fish. You didn't know the fish had your frog and swam to the boat with it. You know, yeah. that, I mean. We talked about that when we had uh, Hank and myself in the studio immediately after the Classic. And, yeah. and it's just one of those freak things that I, you know, I just, I, I screwed up. You know, I saw something that I didn't, I thought I saw something I didn't see. And timing got off. And frog fishing, if your timing gets off, you pay, you can pay the ultimate price. Absolutely. And, it's and a I high did. risk, high reward kind of bait. I paid but an ultimate price. Uh, back to your, um, you know, uh, winning a blue trophy is amazing, but you win a blue trophy. I mean, you could probably go back and say, you know, who won this elite event two years ago, and nobody could tell you which one, who won what event. That's right. You win a classic. I don't forget. You're, remember you forever. I mean, it, you're in the history books, so that's why you got to. <coughs> that's why you have to fish during the year to make the classic. That's right. Um, let me address this question real quick because I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Gage, if I can't give you a correct answer. This question was a while back in the feed, but I saw it and it and it it caught my attention. It said, "Hey, Matt, do you care to talk about the cuts to the field that are going to occur this year?" So, what the plan is that I've been told <clears throat> from some bass people and some other anglers is that they, you know, we all wanted the field to shrink back down below 100. We didn't want to, you know, I'm, I'm okay with 100. I'd like to see 85 to 90. Um, ideally, I think that's a great size field at the Elite Series level. Um, 100 boats is fine. I didn't want to ever see us get back up to that 110, 120, 130 mark. Mm -hmm. um, but in order, excuse me, in order for them to do that, they were going to have to make a big cut this year, bigger than normal. Normally, they drop the bottom 10 to 12 guys. Everybody was guaranteed back this year because of COVID last year. Okay, so there was no cuts. We brought 10 or 12 new rookies in. And in order to get back to that number, they bring 10 or 12 more qualifiers in from the Opens. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to cut a, a minimum 
I'm thinking 20 guys, so <clears throat> a minimum of 20. So based on your – like for me, I think it would be a three-year average because I've been there three seasons now. So they would average my three years, and then they would rank me based on that average. If a guy's been there, I think, five years and, – and don't hold me to this, guys, because I'm not 100% sure on, on all the details and the rules. But if a guy's been there for five years, I think they, <clears throat> they allow him – they average all his years, but they allow him to drop his lowest one. If a guy's only been there two years, they average his two years. But if a guy's only been there one year for all the rookies, they're exempt and they're guaranteed a second year. Um, now, I don't know how many rookies we actually had that had bad years. We had a really strong rookie class that had great years. So, <clears throat> to so here's your, a question for you. Yeah. And, and I've always wondered this. I don't know the answer. And if – so if you're – like legend status and you've you've won angler of the year and you've won a classic you get an invitation back to the elites i know I'm, some I'm, of the guys came back yep to the elites because of that exemption how long is that good for once you come back to the elites using that exemption well so from what i understand and i'll tell you my opinion on the subject Guys that have legends exemptions can get an invitation or an exemption to stay in uh based on you know, the AOI titles and the classic titles, they get points for each one, and a guy with more obviously has the most points. That being said, if you take a legend who is in that bottom 20 and they don't cut him and they give him another legend exemption after he's already had a legends exemption, I think that's wrong. That's me. That's just me thinking out loud and speaking fairly. I think if a guy gets a legend exemption and then he doesn't keep himself qualified, he shouldn't get another legend exemption. Now, that's Makes just – that that's me. But that being said, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know. I think Bass reserves the right to, to give a legend exemption to whoever, whenever, uh, based on, you know, the points that they I accumulate. how that worked. I, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I really don't know. Um, I wish we had Ronnie Moore on here. He could probably answer all these questions for us. But, um, anyway, that's, uh, that's something that we're all going to find out probably pretty soon. Um, I do know some guys have made some announcements about, you know, not coming back next year, whether they were actually verbally called by Bass and cut, I don't know. Um, there again, I, I don't. I just. I, I wish I had more answers, but I don't. But I, I think they're mm -hmm. going to be cutting twenty plus guys, and and you know, I, I hate that. I really do. I, I I think that's a that's a tough spot. A lot of these guys have been there for several, you know, quite a few years, and uh, you know, to uh, to just to just up and, you know, have to walk away. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Tough on everybody. I saw a, um, I saw a question a while back before you started talking about the elites and the wrap-up and stuff from Keith Wood. He asked about the ideal retrieve for the Pulse. Yeah. And there's really – there's no set answer to that. It's, it's kind of like what you said. you got to adjust your retrieve every day based on the kind of conditions you're fishing. Like, if you go on our YouTube channel, Pulse Fish Lures, we're just getting that started. There's not a lot of content there, but there is a really cool video of Matt and I, and I talk about the countdown method, and that is a really cool video to watch if you fish offshore brush piles um, on how, how the setup is, the kind of the real retrieve, the, the gear ratio, and the line, and the retrieve. That's a really cool video to watch. Um, but. You know, if you're in the springtime, you can go down the bank with a quarter ounce one or an eighth ounce one and, you know, vary your retrieve. There's a lot of different ways to retrieve a pulse jig. So, I, you know, it, it's – I've said this a lot, but usually, you know, you guys out there fishing, you know, whatever tournament you're fishing, usually the person that wins has done something a little bit different. And sometimes – a pulse jig can be that one little different thing that can get you a few extra bites and catch you one big one and uh, something the fish hasn't seen. I know up in East Tennessee where I live now, I mean, I lived in Georgia the last 20 years, and when I moved back up there, fish hadn't seen a pulse jig, and they knock a foot of slack in your line, and it's like, <laughs> hey, what's this? You know, so um, it, the retrieve, diff is, it's different from every, every day, but there's some cool videos on our, on our YouTube channel about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I saw a, couple, a bunch of questions about one of my roommates, Scott Martin, <clears throat> and that's why I explained the points deal, what you see online and what you see, <clears throat> well, on the spreadsheet, the Bass sends us, which I don't know if it was public or not. Because he was in before the drop, right? Correct. Before the drop, Scott was actually in 42nd place. After the drop, he, he got moved to 44th. People were asking about how he can still qualify. So <clears throat> basically the way it works in the Bass Opens is we have four more Opens, if I'm not mistaken. And if an elite guy 
uh, that's already qualified or a jackpot guy, say, let's just say Jeff jumps in the open at Lake Norman. Pretty high probability of that happening. Yeah. Of you jumping in or are you winning? Winning. Winning, yeah. <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> All I do is win, right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if, if Jeff jumps in the Norman, uh, or when Jeff jumps in the Lake Norman Bass Open, is that better? Yes. And wins, then that spot, which is already a spot for a classic competitor because the field set at 54, I believe, uh, reverts back to the elites. Uh, so if a jackpotter or an elite guy that's already qualified wins uh, two of the next four opens, then it puts Scott in because Scott's in 44th. So I believe Ray Hanselman Jr. is 43rd. So Ray Hanselman would be the first one moved in. Scott would be the second one moved in. So there's still an opportunity for Scott to get in the Classic. Well, he uh, can win an Open, too, probably. He's going to fish Opens, isn't he? I don't know if Scott's in, getting in them or not. I, he hasn't said that he is. Um, obviously, I'm sure that's – well, if he wins one, then it puts Hanselman in. Yeah. <clears throat> so if – let's just say – I there's think a whole it, lot of scenarios. Yeah, there's, a, there's, an open, there's an Open at uh, Oneida – this week this so week. let's let's just say if somebody wins at oneida that's a jackpot or an elite guy and it puts hanselman it goes it, it goes ahead and puts hanselman in then scott might ought to consider you know fishing the last three yeah because you know scott scott i mean i, I like his chances against anybody on winning an open absolutely um, but so yeah that's right i see the explanation uh Derek, think, uh, basically he needs two people that are already qualified for the Classic to win an Open. Um, they don't necessarily have to be qualified for the Classic. It just has to be a jackpotter like I just explained it. So, Yeah, because in the Opens, you've got to, if you win one, you have to fish the whole series, the, all three of them, to, to be eligible for the Classic. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, all right, any questions about kind of what we've talked about? Because I know it can be a little, a little gray, a little fuzzy, Classic qualifications. The last couple tournaments at St. Lawrence and Champlain, um, you know, I caught most of my fish at St. Lawrence drop shot, and I did catch a few shallow on a, uh, on a tube. Um, and Champlain, it was mostly jerk bait and topwater for me. I caught a lot of fish uh, on a big walking bait and a jerk bait. Jerk bait was kind of my main go-to. And, and I had a lot, I mean, I had a decent finish, but I had a lot, I had pretty solid practice, and I was a little bit disappointed in the quality of the fish that I caught throughout the tournament. Um, practice was pretty solid. I think you and I talked during after practice, yeah. and, and I, you know, I was averaging 17 and a quarter to 18 and a half pounds every day, and and thought if I got lucky, I could catch that 19 and a half, 20 pound bag of smallmouth. And I had yeah. a five pounder the second day. Um, it was actually a five even, and uh, it was funny because a five pound sh sh smallmouth at Champlain is hard to come by. It is a true five pounder. Um, and New was standing beside me in the bag line, and he's like, "God, oh, that's a big one." He said, "I got a big one too," and he opened his bag and he had a five six, I think, in there, or wow. five seven, something like that. He had 18 or 19 pounds that day. So That was crazy, the weights <laughs> in that event, because, like, what was it, 16 or 17 pounds was, like, 65th place the first day or something crazy? I mean, yeah. that place is – It is unbelievable. unbelievable. The, and, you know, at the end of the season, I've never been the, the bubble boy for a championship. I've been fortunate not been the bubble boy for a championship. You know, thank goodness I was on the right side of the bubble, but mm – -hmm. What goes through your mind is the 6,000 different scenarios that happened, not at the last tournament or the last day, because I caught a fish in the last 30 minutes of the last day of the last tournament that <clears throat> I can sit here and say that got me in the classic, you know. Or I can go back to Gunnersville when I had a dead fish each day, and it cost me 10 places, uh, $7,500, and at minimum of 10 points. 10 points, You yeah. know, so I can look – if, but if, if I would have missed the classic, I'd have probably said something like that. Yeah. You know, but if, since I made the classic, I could talk about a fish catch that, that, that made it. But yeah. you can, there's just so many scenarios that run through your head, whether you made it or you, or you didn't. And uh, it, point being is, is I'm glad we have nine events. I'm glad we have a lot of opportunities to screw up exactly. <laughs> and make up for it. <laughs> um, because we were talking about the Opens earlier and how tough it is to make the elites because you only have three opportunities. Is it yeah. three or four? It's three in it's each, three. each division. Three tournaments. And the first one I fished at the Harris Chain, I mean, I lost I lost enough fish both days to be in the top ten cut, but I think, I can't remember, I think I finished 96th out of 225 or whatever it was. And, you know, you're done for the year when you do that. You have to catch them every event. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, Joe Mitchell, that, you know, I'm going to address his uh, comment. He said he'd like to see a similar rule as the Masters golf winners. Once you're a champion, you're always invited back to the Classic. <laughs> you know, I like that and I don't like that. And, and the only reason I like it because it's just, a, it's just a cool rule and it's cool to see those guys return and compete. The reason I don't like it is because 
let's just say you know bass fishing you can stretch out you know pga things like that they have seniors tours they there's a lot of sports where you can age out really quick fishing you really can't mm-hmm. until you just physically can't do it anymore i mean look at rick klun he's a machine yeah. you know you're talking about 70 something years old now they're just guy acre guy acres what 80 now yeah he's out there still competing so i don't, the reason i wouldn't want to say that to an extent is because of i don't want to see a classic field bigger than 54 people i don't want to see a 60 65 70 because then it starts to um, dilute the, the coverage. It starts to dilute the media attention, uh, especially for individual anglers. It's harder for the staff to keep up with everybody. Um, there's a lot of different variables, uh, and, it's, and it doesn't make it as entertaining for the fans when you have a lot more competitors on the water to cover because you've got a guy back here who might have caught a giant sack, but he never got, he never got any coverage because they didn't have enough personnel there mm-hmm. and, and for whatever reason. But um, So, yeah, I, I see the pros and cons of that. I mean, I think it's a cool rule. I think it's a cool opportunity. Um, but then I see, I, I definitely see the negatives. Here's a cool question from Brandon Little. Okay. If you had your chance to fish anywhere within 10 hours of Shelby, where would you go? 10 hours? 10 hours. Now, <laughs> that, I know, knock, that knocks out a lot of well, places that I had I know in mind. Two, I know, 10 hours of Shelby for three days in September. That's I know, pretty specific. I know, well, oh, my Lord. In <laughs> September mean, for three days? That's pretty specific. You can get to St. Clair from here in 10 hours. That would be my first choice. Okay. In September... I'm going to second exactly what Todd just said. Either St. Lawrence River or Lake St. Clair, because September up there on both those fisheries is phenomenal. If you go south of here, it's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get, no, scratch St. Lawrence. That's 13 hours. Never yeah. mind. Scratch St. Lawrence. St. Clair's what, nine? Nine from here, nine or ten, right at the ten. Yeah, mark, right honestly. at the ten or less, Mark. Yeah. Saint, check out St. Clair, man. You, you, you can't go wrong with St. Clair. In uh, September, you can catch them a lot of different ways, and, boy, they're going to be chomping, I promise you. <clears throat> so, Kenneth Chu, thank you, Kenneth. He said they have to wait until they know how many of the new qua- of the new qualifiers accept their invitations, so they got to wait till the Opens are over until before they announce the final cuts. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if, I guess if a guy was far enough down, he knows he's out. Right. Because I've seen a couple guys already mention that they're not coming back. Right. <laughs> due to whatever reason. But, yeah. Um, Ricky so he's McKinney. Got a, he's got a vacation set term. That's why I was so specific. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very good uh, Good point there. I did not mention this. I saw this on Facebook the other day. My wife shared it. <clears throat> How about Cleveland County starting a high school bass team? I think that's absolutely awesome. Um, I will say publicly right here, right now, if there's any way I can help, uh, let me know. You know, worst case scenario, I can get together with the team. I think they want you to coach it, don't they? Isn't that what I heard? I, I, I said what I can handle, Jeff. <laughs> don't be volunteering me for, for a full-time coaching position I'm here. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I will do whatever I can when I, when I have the time available to help out, guys. If I, you'd I, have seen what went on at the Airy House this afternoon with his kids, he, he's not going to have a whole lot of time. <laughs> I, I, all I can say is I'm, I, am, I love my kids, but I'm so happy to be an empty nester at this point. He, so. said, he left our house. We were on our way to studio, and he, 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 this way, he, uh, he said, I appreciate my kids being grown now even more <laughs> after he left my house. Now, we had some friends over there. We had, had, yeah. we had four or five kids no, in the house got, all running you around. you got great kids. Yeah, they're pretty but, good. They're pretty good. Uh, yeah, Cleveland County starting a high school bass team. And from what I understand, they don't, it's not going to be associated with one specific high school. And if it is, <clears throat> any kid from any of the four high schools or five high schools in the county can, can compete and participate. So that's really cool. Oh, on the same team. I got you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, all right. Jody Alley uh, asked if I was done for the year. I am 155,000% done with tournaments for the year. <laughs> I, uh, You're about to get in the deer woods. For yeah, that's long, right. I'm going to do a couple things this fall. we got some things coming up. Uh, plan, my plan is to be at the Pittman Creek Show uh, with Mr. Todd and Pulse Fish Lures in October. Um, I will be at the Toyota Owners Tournament that we don't talk about enough on this show. Uh, if you haven't got signed up, be sure to sign up. One thing cool they're doing at the Toyota Owners Tournament this year, they're giving away a brand-new Tundra. Really? And it's not to the first-place team. It is to a random draw. Of the of, of the competitors that are going to be and present, it's the new body style, I guess, for the. I don't know 20, if it's a twenty. I, I think it's a twenty-one model. I, I can't. I, I can't guarantee that. Um, the twenty-twos are probably going to be hard to come by. I imagine it's pretty cool for them giving one because you can't find them. That's right. You, you can't, literally can't. You find can't them. find a new Tundra, but I promise you, they're going to give one away at that time. Is that on Lake Fork? That is on Table Rock. Table Rock. Okay. That is on Table Rock at the end of October. Uh, I believe it's the 22nd through the 24th, somewhere around there. But you can go to the, the Toyota Bonus Bucks website. You can get signed up. It's free to sign up. 
And well, whoever uh, whoever wins it probably could win it on a pulse jig that time of year. Absolutely, it pulse is. jig, and you better have some spinning PJs in the boat. Yep. Because both will be a big player in that event. Yep. That lake flat out catches them on those two baits. Yep. All right, uh, Jeff. What time we got? I haven't. Seven forty-seven. <laughs> cool. We got thirteen minutes. Uh, thirteen minutes to take questions, which I see a few in here. And uh, we're going to jump on those. We've got an awesome giveaway at the end of the show. we got a cool trivia question, too. we got a really cool trivia question, yeah, too. you're going to have to use your noggin. I don't know if you can gadoogle this one or not. You're well, gonna, you I might. we say that every time. If you keep and talking get, about it, Matt will just give the answer away. An <laughs> we get an answer like that. You kind of you alluded a little bit around it. So. Yeah, shh. He'll, See, he'll allude you're all the way mat, to dude. it. Dude, you're giving hints about the trivia question. In about <laughs> 10 seconds, he'll allude all the way Here, to here's it. Here's a good question, and... and Ha- right. Hamrick asked what it's going to take to win the Norman Open. Come on, Hamrick. You know what it's going to take to win the Oh, Norman Scott? Open. Yeah, he knows what it's going to take <laughs> to win the Open. Really? Probably whatever <laughs> Scott catches. Probably now, Is Scott so. fishing it? I'm assuming he's fishing it. I guess. Now, has he, Scott, have you fished all the Opens this year? And are you fishing the Lake Norman Open? Because that's a guy who has as good a chance as anybody to go over there and win that tournament, and he'd be a jackpot guy. Jackpot. News he, says more than you catch, I'm assuming. <laughs> He's replying to Scott's he's, question. He's, I can't see it on my feed. He's cracking the Scott. He's yeah, cracking on Scott. I, I know. There ain't no doubt he's cracking on Scott. Yeah. Um, yeah. Scott, let us know if you're fishing that because we'll, we, uh, I, know, I know a man by the name of Scott Martin that if you're jackpot in that tournament, I'm going to have to pull from my sponsor over here, Mr. Todd Goat, of course, and my buddy Sean will be staying at the house and things like that. But if, uh, if, if a jackpotter wins that event, I mean, there's four opens, so that could that could. I think there might be – Five opens left. Didn't the Central or something move an event? I think 13 a day average wins that event. Scott said probably not. What do you think about that? 13 a day average. Somebody uh, will catch 16, 17 the first day probably. You I'm going gonna, gonna to go with, let's see, 39-7. That's over 13 a day. 39-7. Scott, what do you think about Scott's the Lake Norman expert. 39-7 wins the Bass Open at Lake Norman. In September, thirty-nine-seven. Give me your feedback. I want your feedback too, New, because you're a you're a, a Lake Norman stud who uh, who knows that time of year what it what it'll take. Um, all right, we uh, got to jump back over here. The opens will get twelve invites no matter what. If number three doesn't accept, then they go to number four and so on. Okay, so there's there's going to be twelve invitations. That's good to know. I didn't know that, Kenny. Thanks for the info. Um, New said twelve a day. 12 a day, so that's 36. So I said 39, yeah. 39.7. Um, so I think I think in that, you know, I think between that 37 and 40-pound range will be – I mean, I would take 13 a day and stay at the house. Me Ain't too. Ain't no doubt in my mind. i stay at your house, and you can, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could fix black and red snapper every night. We'll, we'll oh, buddy. Good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, buddy Black said – uh, he said it's also middle schools for Cleveland County, so that's really, really cool to know. Also, middle schools for Cleveland County are going to be putting together a bass team. So, very, very cool. Hamrick um, said 35. Derek Westfall said we should have you on uh, more often because you're a great fill-in for Thrifty. I think it's his nice way of saying he likes you more than smoke. <laughs> Don't tell Thrifty that. <laughs> Don't worry. He doesn't watch the show. We've He'll never know. <laughs> He'll, He'll never, never know. know. <laughs> Unless New tells him, which he probably will. Mm-hmm. New likes to start. Start it, start it, start it. He's probably on the phone with him right now. He's probably like, I'm watching this show. Can you believe what these cats are saying? Five opens left. Kenny and Dale Barker just let me know there's five opens left. I just told you that. (laughs) Like three minutes ago. I don't listen to you. Like Griff says, I don't listen to you. That's what he looks at me. Y'all both, neither one of y'all listen. So listen to me. What do you think about next year's schedule? We don't, I hadn't had a lot of questions come up. What do you think about next year's schedule and the old TBD thrown in there? Well, uh, the TBD, I saw a question earlier. Let's address that about where it might be. Um, I, I watched a couple of the elite guys uh, give their two cents on where they think it might be. I think Hank was one of them. Uh, and they said Pickwick. And first week of June, you know, I think there's only so many options. I don't think it would be up north. I think it's too early to be up north. Some of those mm-hmm. lakes don't. The bass season's not even open right. yet up north. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Kenny asked if bass is for sale and then put a laughy emoji. That's so funny. That's so funny because that topic comes. It's like Zoom being for They're sale. They're just as Guys, for sale as Zoom is. Yeah, that's it's yeah. the dumbest thing I, I hear about. Once a year, every year, there's rumors that pop up. Hey, did you hear so and so's for sale? So and so's for sale, and then and then nothing. No bass is not for sale. Bass is not for sale, Kenny. <laughs> Which Kenny knows it's not for sale, and that's why he put the little laughing emoji on there. Yeah. Um, what's the answer to the trivia question, Matt? <laughs> Good try, Keith. 
Good try. <laughs> um, all right, I saw – oh, so the TBA, I'm going to say Pickwick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with Hank and them. I'm thinking possibly Pickwick. Uh, could be somewhere in Alabama, though. That was the that was the wild card. Uh, could be somewhere on the uh, – like Lay Lake or Logan Could be Martin somewhere on the Coosa like River that. chain. Yeah. yeah, first week of June is probably a good time to be there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> Neely Henry could be kind of tricky that time of year, but uh, I think overall uh, the Coosa River chain. Here's a good River question. Yep. What, do you, what do you think about going to Oahe next year? Woo! Uh, we just saw today somebody caught a 7-4 smallmouth, like a South Dakota State record at Oahe. 7-4. Yeah. 7-4. Uh, so – I think Oahe is a unique fishery. I haven't done my research on it yet, but what I will tell you is every time a schedule comes out, whether I was fishing FLW or bass, I get excited like a kid on Christmas morning when I see a lake on the schedule in a state that I've never been to before mm-hmm. or a lake that I've never been to Kinda before. It evens a playing field, doesn't it? It really does. Number one, it evens a playing field. Number two, I just like going to new places. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just do. As a fisherman, I've been blessed to see a lot of really cool places across this country at some really good times. And, uh, you know, this is a good smallmouth fishery. I've heard good things about it. The little bit that I have read and seen, I've seen good things about it. It's obviously got some giant smallmouth in it. Maybe yeah. I can finally catch a six-pounder. You know, I've never, <laughs> I've never caught a true six. I've caught a ton of five twelves and 13s and 14s and eights and whatever. I've caught five everythings, and I've never caught a six-pound smallmouth. So um, it obviously has them. And I think we'll be there at a pretty good time because we'll be there in August, so the fish should be pretty, pretty well set up doing their offshore thing, and, and it ought to be a good tournament. Uh, and that's one thing I heard uh, Chris said, Oahe is a humongous lake. The only downfall of that is I Googled it the other day, and it's 22 hours from my driveway. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, a a good, it's a nice little hip, uh, hop, skip, and a jump. Jeffrey, it's 22 hours. You hear me say that? Yes. 20, 22 <laughs> hours. Uh, somebody Spencer, had a good, somebody, man. Somebody had a good comment about the TBD yeah. because it's got to be close to Fort because it's the following weekend. You don't is get, it the you, following week? I think that's it's, what he said. There's a week in between. Not, I'm pretty but. sure there's a week in between. I might be wrong. I probably trust them more than I do me and my <laughs> schedule. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if that's true, it, it probably is Pickwick. That's not, you know, that's a day's uh, drive. What? what? I was laughing at the comments. Oh, I haven't seen what you're laughing at, apparently. But You will in a second. <laughs> uh, very excited about Santee next year at the end of March. That will be awesome, needless to say. And uh, I, uh, I did see... Spencer McCrary, it's a cool. It's a cool statement you made. That <laughs> would you be open to going back to California if they paid a travel fee? Well, first of all, I've never been to California. I know Bass has, but I haven't. So I would be excited to go to the Delta or Clear Lake. If they paid a travel fee, I would 100% be super excited about it. But I don't know that it'll ever happen. But I would love, and I think that's fair, if they could discount our entry fee or kick yeah. us a little travel money if there we're going to have to drive two and a half days across country or three days or whatever it is i'm laughing at hamrick because he, he said he told new make sure you you get a dog house at your new house so <laughs> Brittany will have a she shed and new will have a dog house so that's perfect. He'll, he'll be if he builds it he'll be living in it there ain't no doubt in my mind <laughs> david mundy asked a good question any plans on an eighth ounce or three sixteenth spinning pj um we've talked about doing a quarter ounce model um i think i think at some point we'll do that not sure on the eighth ounce we would have to I mean, a lot of testing to make sure we got the right yeah, blade Yeah, you'd have to start downsizing and, everything. Exactly. You know, that's when you're talking, when you're talking about an eighth ounce underspin, you're talking about a beetle spin. Beetle spin. Basically. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to. six pound or four pound. That's line. right. You're going to have to yeah. really start down, downsizing some things to get it to, to do right, to get it to act right. Um, we've talked about adding a quarter ounce to the lineup, which we probably do next year. I also saw a comment earlier, sorry I didn't address this quicker, on what my favorite color was. Um, my favorite color in the underspin lineup is probably the albino. Um, which has got a little blue, blue purple hue on the top um, that kind of fades into a pearl color at the bottom. Um, I probably use that color as much as anything, but the, the Tennessee Shad obviously is, is a phenomenal one for the Tennessee River system. Um, you got Smoky there, which is just the lead, the lead color. Uh, and then the, the pearl. The pearl, uh, the pearl is actually just a solid. Actually, that's an albino in that pack, but we have a pearl that's actually a solid white, um, which is obviously a super popular color. Yeah, um, all and right. our um, our plastics work really well with these too. If you know, if you want more subtle approach, that fork style, you know, fluke style trailer, works really good. If you you know, there's a couple different ways to a lot of different ways to with trailers on it, like you know, a paddle tail and a and our but our bait works really well on it too. <laughs> Michael said he, he hooked an alligator on a crawl at Ufala Saturday evening while he was fishing. He said he thought about me when I blew the horn. Trying to land that fish that you follow because <laughs> I scared myself to death. And I, 
I just thought something was coming out of the water to eat me instead of that three pounder I was fighting. But anyway, uh, yeah, all those are, are, are great colors. Uh, thank you, Brandon. And uh, they're all fish catching colors. And, you know, never be afraid to mix and match the, the head colors with different color swim bait trailers. Sometimes the ugliest, most unorthodox thing uh, works the best for whatever reason. Yeah. We don't necessarily have to ex understand it. If the fish eat it, just throw it. <laughs> don't. Uh, um, Derek, you asked about a four inch fetch. Well, we have a, so our fetch is actually four and a half inches. So if we ever did a smaller version, probably go down to the three and a half. But because of the body style and the way that bait's designed, it's hard to get that subtle action and the weight. So that bait's designed to run weightless. Okay. You can run it on, on weighted hooks and, and jig heads and it works great. But it's designed to, to run weightless, and that's when it's been most effective for me. When you go to a three and a half or four inch bait, start losing some of that plastic and the density of the plastic, and you start rigging it weightless, then it tends to not kill properly and roll over easier, and it doesn't have the action. You're going to have to start adding some weight to it, whether it's a belly weighted swim bait hook or things like that. So it's a little trickier when you go to shrinking a bait uh, that's designed like that one is uh, to, to get the proper action. But no, I mean, we're not against it, and it might, might be something that we look into with the Lunker Hunt crew. And uh, we'll definitely uh, definitely check into that. Um, Scott Scott and New are just are just are just going at it. They're just going. They're at going. It. At they're going it. at. It. They're 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 overtaking. They're taking over our feed. Yeah. Walsh. They're taking over our feed. Huh? Arguing back and forth. It's trivia I said, time. I said New and Hamrick are. Oh no! Are, I see them going back and forth. <laughs> it's trivia uh, time. It's what? Trivia time. Oh, it's trivia time. It's yep. It is seven fifty eight. Seven fifty eight. I don't know the question or the answer because y'all did that. So if y'all see it, y'all can call the winner. We know the answer. I know the answer. All right. If, do you know the answer? Mm -hmm. Are you, you sure? You told me. Okay, but I just want to make sure you, you you remembered it. I can write it down if you need to read it. But You told me earlier today you remember <laughs> stuff. Correct. So Correct. You do. Um, all right. So, guys, again, the trivia giveaway tonight, sponsored don't call by me Rain Man for nothing. <laughs> Sp <laughs> sponsored by <laughs> Jeff's looking at you like, huh, huh? <laughs> what, what did he say? Jeff, uh, well, how did I get into this? <laughs> Look at there, both of them are mind blown. Just I your mean, glare. You know, just well, Charlie Babbitt over there. Just your glare. The giveaway tonight, really cool, guys. Sponsored by Pulse Fish Lures, one of my sponsors, one of the show sponsors. And what they're going to allow the winner to do is actually... Oh, by the way, I saw a message from somebody earlier that said they didn't Derek, get their... Derek, Westfall. Did, okay, so Derek, send us... Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember what you won and when you won it, but what it was and when you won it so we can look back and check Just in on that. Shoot us a message to the page, and I'll, I'll hit you up after the show. <laughs> yeah, we'll shoot get us, it figured out. Shoot us yep. a message to the Facebook page, and, and Jeff will take care of it after the show. He'll hit you up. Um, all right. Wow, Chris McDonald said 30-plus a day. <laughs> at Santee, wow. which is 120 pounds for four days. Um, yeah, well, you know, I, could, I think we'll see some 30-pound bags if it's right. But every, I don't think somebody – Every I don't think day, day after day is pretty Yeah, I don't think an individual stout. will catch 30 four You'll days in a row. you probably see a few on the first day, and that's it. Yeah, and you might see – it Maybe just depends. I think it depends on how far into the spawn we are and things yeah. like that. But, you know, I, that, that's – I mean, I hope, I hope you're right, Chris. I hope we see somebody take 120 pounds and just – walk it out i mean that's that'd be awesome yeah it'd be awesome um all right trivia question so what pulse fish is doing what todd and jeremy are doing over at pulse fish are they, they're going to allow the, the winner of the trivia question tonight to go to the website and pick out 10 baits of their choice you could pick out a couple spinning pjs you can pick out a couple pulse, pulse jigs games. you can pick out some soft plastic trailers to go with them you could pick out some of the swim bait heads but you get to pick out 10 baits of your choice and they're going to ship them to you along with a carpet graphic for your boat, okay? Or you could stick it in your, you know, I thought about sticking one upstairs on the floor in the playroom that's carpet. Wouldn't that be cool to cover the playroom? If you're lucky, he might, he might throw in a hat, too. With carpet. With carpet might throw graphics. in a hat, too. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Real quick, yeah. we had four or five people that bought hats that requested that Hank, Thrift and myself all signed that hat. Okay, we're still working on that, y'all, because of uh, we've been traveling and stuff. Just give us some time. Give us a couple weeks. What we're going to do is we're going to ship the hats to Hank. We're going to let him sign them. He's going to ship them back to us, and then Thrift and I will sign them, then we'll ship them out, okay? It's going to take a little bit of time to get everything together. But why we still have an opportunity, we've only sold four or five of those hats. We've got seven or eight more in stock left. Jeff's ordered some more. If you want a hat signed by Hank Cherry, myself, and Brian Thrift, let us know but order it immediately, put a note in there in the order that you want it, and we'll send that along with the rest of them to Hank to get him to go ahead and sign them. What what, what we got left? Eight. We got eight left. Okay, that's all we got in stock. We got eight hats Maybe left. Maybe seven. 
four. No, there's eight there. Yeah, but I can't remember how many were ordered the first time. Okay, so seven or eight. But anyway, uh, order that hat. Put a note in there that you want it signed. Even if you don't want one signed, we've only got eight left in stock. So, or seven. <laughs> one of the and those two. are like gold because they're Richardson 112s, yeah, which Richard- are impossible to find yeah. right now. <laughs> they are impossible. That's right. Um, yes. So, all right. So, we don't uh, have more. Yeah, y'all, y'all get on that. If, if you do want one signed by all three of us or you just want an LTF hat, this is what we've got left. It's all we've got left for right now. And like Jeff said, the Richardson 112 models that we use, which is a phenomenal hat, are completely out of stock pretty much everywhere in the country or the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> when they come pretty back much. in stock, we'll get some. Pretty much. But, all right, y'all ready? You ready, Todd? Let's do it. If you see the winner on your feed, call it out. If I see the winner on my feed, I'll call it out. Jeff doesn't know the answer, so he's kind of out of it. Yeah. Um, here we go. Trivia question time for the Pulse fish giveaway i need y'all to name oh drum roll yeah there you go. thrift never does that do it again it's not bad not bad not bad better than thrift yeah yeah difference. better 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 than not getting one uh all right pulse jig giveaway the 10 baits of your choice plus a carpet graphic i will i need the names of the three guys that are currently double qualified for the 2022 Bassmaster Classic. Those are also the three guys that are the reason they're taken down through 42nd place as of right now in the standings. Yeah. So I need the name of the three guys, the three Elite Series pros that are du- currently double qualified for the 2022 Bassmaster Classic at Lake Hartwell. Go. The they're throwing no, weights. Oh, I didn't me. write it down. I know. You think they can tell what I'm writing? <laughs> By the good. way, Ernie Wallace, I know I do need a hat. They were laughing at me the whole show because my head's like glowing, shining because I have no hair left. maintenance. I need all three of them in one comment. I'm not piecing stuff together, y'all. Yep. I one, need all three comment. in one comment. All three. All three in one comment. This might take a little bit. This is good. Got this it. is good. Yeah. You do? Wait, what? Taku, Terry, is. and BP. There it is. Tyler Taku, Callaway. Terry, and BP. Kenny Wittick. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. Wait a minute. Hang on. Who was the first one? The first yep, you're one right. Was, the first one I saw Kenny was Wittick. Kenny Wittick. Yep, you're right. Okay, Kenny Wittick was the first one. Unfortunately, beat Tyler Callaway, which I think Tyler's actually won something from us before. Yeah, he yeah. was two ahead of him, so, so sorry, Kenny, Tyler. Wait a minute. Oh, I see it. Kenny Wittick. Okay, yep. Kenny gotcha. Wittick. Yep. Kenny, you are the champion. Uh, so what I'm going to get you to do is shoot us a message uh, or shoot. Is it better that he just messages you? You can message the Pulse Jig page, either one, whatever you want to do. Message the Pulse Jig page and on, on or Facebook. the Let's Talk Fish Facebook page. But yep. um, shoot us a message. Give us your shipping information and tell us what 10 baits you want. And those 10 baits will be shipped out to your, uh, your address along with a carpet graphic. Uh, yep. Compliments of, of Todd and the crew over at Pulse Fish. So, good show. Sweet. Good show. Good show. Thanks. Good show. Um, all right. Cool question, too. It took them a minute, but they got it. So, yep. let me tell you how, they, how, how all these guys are qualified. I'll be right back. Polinic. Pol- you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Polinic won an open. Why are you walking so funny? <laughs> when you get old, you have an enlarged prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Todd had to TT if anybody's wondering. <laughs> um, Polinic won an open. Hank, obviously, won the classic. And Taku uh, won the final elite tournament this year on the St. Lawrence River. We had a rule in the elite series this year that the the winner of the final event at the St. Lawrence River would be qualified to fish the 2022 Bassmaster Classic. So that's how those three uh, made it. That's how those three made it. So, uh, Kenny, congratulations. Um, Oh, Kenny wants me to pick them out. We can do that. We can do All right, better yet, we'll get Todd to pick them out. He knows the fish catchers as good as I do, if not better. Um, so we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll pick you out 10 nice baits. Uh, we'll get you a little assortment together, and we'll ship them out to you. But shoot, shoot Todd a message on the Pulse Fish uh, Facebook page uh, with your shipping information so he knows where to ship this stuff to. Guys, again, thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to close it out, I guess, without Todd here. Todd's yeah. He's, uh, in his When you got to go, you got to so go. You got to go, you got to go. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I, I plan to be back in studio next week if you got some – some hot topics for us let us know uh we'll be doing a little wrap up uh on some some other things with thrift 
and I, I think he's going to be back next week. He might be going. He might have another event next week. I'm not sure. We'll check in on that for y'all. But uh, if not, we might get a special guest back in the studio. So, guys, again, and gals, thanks for tuning in. When we can't go fishing, we'll sit right here on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and talk fish. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.